Hey guys, happy Sunday. I'm Jason McNeil, this is Cup of Joe Canada. You guys want to talk about? There's a lot of stuff going on. We can talk about uh, we talk about the Raptors. Raptors winning two in a row, uh, tying the series two-two with Boston. I'm I'm loving it. Let's be honest. They've gotten better every game so far, from one to two to three to four. Boston can't say the same. So. Right now, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. Um, we'll see. Everything can change in a day, right? Uh, what else can we talk about? We can talk about uh, coronavirus. You want to talk about corona? I don't really want to talk about coronavirus, to be honest. Uh, the whole thing is just really, really starting to bother me now. Um, I don't know. You, do you guys find stories being recycled in the news? Like, because there's no real global authority, like the who is trash, so because there's no real global authority, I hear stories like Italy says something, and then two weeks later, England says the same thing, and then two weeks later, I hear it from America. And, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know if you heard this, this nonsense recently, Teresa Tam talking about uh, if, if you're going to be having the casual sex, wear the masks, and you know, giving the, the advice to, to that, uh, that group of people. And this is it's basically lifted from Rolling Stone in April, right? So like Rolling Stone put out an article uh, talking to doctors about this months ago and now Canada's sort of top health expert just parroting the same same nonsense <laughs> but hey I guess we're we're at that point now where you know the, there's not that much new uh, useful information coming out and so we're maybe recycling old information uh, maybe just, you know, looking for clicks and likes and views like everything else. Uh, vaccines. I'm talking about vaccines. It's interesting because a lot of people, myself included, were obviously skeptical as we started to barrel towards this vaccine and people started saying, well, we're going to take something that takes 10 years and we're going to do it in six months and we're going to get it done. And a lot of media and a lot of, say, left-leaning politicians we're like, oh, that's fear-mongering. You guys are just anti-vaxxers. You guys are helping the anti-vaxxers. You guys are... Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward four or five months, Donald Trump is very optimistic that we can get a vaccine before the election. Democrats and Democrat-friendly media are saying, well, you know, I wouldn't trust it. Kamala Harris came out. I, I wouldn't trust Trump's vaccine. So, essentially, same as everyone else, if you're rushing it and you're trying to get it out quickly, it makes me nervous about you know, how effective it's going to be and how safe it's going to be. Which you called fear-mongering until it was Donald Trump saying something and then you were like, no, 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 that makes perfect sense. Which is, you know, par for the course in media, right? They believe something until Donald Trump says it and then they're like, no, 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 that's false, it's false, it's terrible, right? You see the same thing with the mail-in voting, right? They know mail-in voting is vulnerable. They know that because when he said, vote twice, nobody said you can't. Everybody just said, well, that's illegal. Don't do that. that. That would be, yeah, I know it's illegal, but it's possible because the mail-in voting is not secure. They know that. He says that, and they're like, no, 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 no. It's fine. He's fear-mongering, blah, 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 blah. Seems like it's all trash. I, 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 you know, well, who do you trust? That's, that's what it comes down to. If you trust the person speaking, the statement is correct. If you don't trust the person speaking, the statement is false. Nobody is any, any longer assessing statements what is the value of the statement I don't care who said it right that, that's really how you get to truth nobody cares anymore uh, what else is in the news what do we got what do we got we already talked about the Wii scandal so I'm not gonna talk about that um, Toronto what's in the Toronto news recently in the Scarborough Mirror um, I was reading a, it's an article this focusing on the, the profession of hairstyling, hairstylists. And there's a, a barber who started a, essentially it was a program for youth, right? It's like a mentorship program. I believe he wants it to be a college, but the problem is that barber is not a profession, hairstylist is a profession. So in the article, they go into the idea that to be a barber, you have to learn to dye hair and to do all, all of the hairstylist treatment stuff Whereas the actual barbering technique, not really a focus of the hairstyling course. So in his estimation, and I, I gotta say, I kind of agree, 
Barbering and hairstylist, two different things. They really should probably be their own professions. Now, if barbering was a profession, I believe he could have continued this program. He could have uh, offered it as a college, um, given you know degrees and, and diplomas and such, and then he would have maintained government funding for the program, which was good. Like it was, you know, teaching kids skills for for barbering. There, there was a bunch of other stuff too, like music and business and the history, uh, you know, of the industry and such. So like there, there was a lot, you know, to it. But the crux of the issue, hairstylist is a profession, barber is not a profession. Should barber be a profession? According to uh, the gentleman in the Scarborough Mirror, yes, yes it should, and I'm inclined to agree. Um, I think that's all I got for today, for now. Um, Jason McNeil, Cup of Joe Canada, holla.